Well, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a covered bridge in winter, winter time. Snow covered. Uh, it should be, I don't know, medium difficulty, I think. Well, I'm not sure how long it'll take us because I haven't done it myself yet. So <laughs> it'll be an interesting show. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, so this is my reference image here. I found this picture off of a royalty-free website, um, and I really loved it. I've actually had it uh, in my to-do list for over a year now, so I'm really excited to do it for you today for our patrons. So welcome, and thank you guys uh, who are watching with us live, and later on who couldn't make it for the live show. We really appreciate our patrons this year. It's been an amazing year, especially those who have stuck with us this week when Patreon is raised rates and done all kinds of <laughs> made so many people mad. <laughs> we really appreciate you guys sticking with us. Uh, let's get over our palette uh, real quick for this painting. Uh, we've got carbon black, unbleached titanium, titanium white, uh, quinacridone magenta, this is cadmium red medium, cadmium red light, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, thalo green yellow shade, thalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, Burnt Sienna and Burnt Umber. It's kind of our basic palette that we've been working with lately. Uh, and I'm not sure if I'll use all of the colors, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to work most of those in. Uh, and I'm working on a 9 by 12 inch um, canvas panel today. This is a linen covered panel. Um, it's a little bit smoother. I don't know. It's got a little bit of texture. I've been liking it. Uh, I tried the first one a couple weeks ago on one of my videos and I really liked it. Uh, one other thing to mention, for those watching with us live, we're going to be giving away this painting during the video today. So um, while we're doing the live show, Mark will ask a question at some point and we'll, or actually I think he's going to- We're just going to do a random- Draw, name, draw random names random from name people who are watching today. From people who are chatting. People who are chatting. So if you're, That's right. if you're just one of those lurkers- you better get you better signed get into in, YouTube and get into chatting here. Chat <laughs> if you want to win a painting. That's right. <laughs> and uh, we're also going to be doing another giveaway for this video for those who are not watching live or, you know, if you want to come back after the live show and do this uh, in the comments after the show, uh, you will just uh, leave a comment in the comment section, um, not the live chat because those don't get saved. So it'll have to be after the show processes and it was over, leave a comment and one of those uh, comments. So we'll be picking to win a $50 gift card to the brush guys. So that's like a little bonus secret uh, Patreon only uh, thank you gift for our 100,000 subscriber giveaway weekend. It's been a fun weekend already. Been giving away all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, anyhow, let's get started with our painting, I guess. Huh? <laughs> and action. And action. All right. <laughs> um, so let's do our background first. We'll kind of throw on some uh, sky color and background snow color. Uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do the whole thing with this kind of a light gray color. So I'm going to grab a big dollop of white and just a little tiny touch of ultramarine blue and maybe a tiny little bit, even less of the burnt umber. That'll kind of create that kind of gray blue color. Uh, it's a good winter sky color, I think. We can make it a little bit more blue maybe to punch it up just slightly. And then use that brown to sort of dull it because it's not that vivid. It's a little bit more gray. There we go. I think that's about the color we want. We just want it light enough or dark enough that, uh, yeah, that'll be perfect. That it'll be visible underneath our snow when we put our white over the top. It just has to have enough value difference, I think, um, in order to be visible behind our white trees and our white snow and all that good stuff. I'm just gonna lay it on with my large flat brush I'm going to set that underneath there to see if I can keep it from smacking while I'm doing this. Cushion it a little bit. All right. I'm just 
going to get that on pretty quick. I'm not plan working on um, planning on doing any clouds because the the picture that I had didn't have any clouds, and I don't really think it needs it. There's a lot going on in here. I'll probably simplify the trees just a little bit too, just to make it a little bit less busy. And I was trying to work out the actual angles with my T-square, and none of them lined up. So <laughs> and then I noticed that uh, the the lines here actually curve. It kind of does this curve thing. Same thing here. This line curves like this. So it's an old bridge. It's got nothing really matched. It lines up properly. Uh, so that's actually probably good for us because we're kind of off the hook. We can just kind of make it as rickety as we want to. <laughs> a little bit easier. We don't have it to have it all lined up perfectly. I mean, there just wasn't any any like vanishing point that I could find. Nothing and <laughs> nothing matched up to a vanishing point. Uh, so we'll do the best we can to get it looking at least sort of square. It's gonna be kind of like that barn. Exactly. Yeah, that barn. So yeah, I got comments about it being like, out of perspective. Exactly. And I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the photo, the photo was. Saggy barns. Yeah, exactly. Matter too. Exactly. Yeah. That's all right. There's always critics out there. You just got to do what makes you happy. Let everybody else have their own opinions. My thing is just, I don't know. I just, I don't understand a mentality that wants to pull people down and, you know, make sure that you know that it's not up to par or something you know I just there's a lot of art in museums that I'm not I'm going to darken up these corners that is not my favorite you know we've gone to a lot of museums and galleries where there's been art that's been like mm, I don't know about that but or I didn't understand it or you know it just wasn't my particular style that I liked but it's all valid all, all art is valid even the outsider art from folks who are you know folk art and um, Grandma Moses my goodness she had you know, a whole career built on drawing badly. <laughs> you know, I mean, honestly, if you look at her stuff, everything's out of perspective. It's not, you know, it's not a, prof you know, what somebody might consider professional art. You know, it's, but it's beautiful. It's, uh, it's all got its own beauty. So, all right. So there we go. We just darkened up just a tiny bit in the corners there. And uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and have you dry this, honey. I probably should have done that ahead of time, but... Um, it's been one of those mornings we we were waiting to get the uh, to do our hundred thousand giveaway live show uh, last night. We stayed up till about eleven, and it finally happened at eleven. And we were like, "It's too late. <laughs> we're just going to bed." So we uh, we had to do that this morning before this show. We had our little giveaway show, so I'm sure most of you got to catch that. Hopefully, and we're giving away uh, more brush guys. Um, stuff and some golden paints and things so be sure if you want to um, enter for those that you find that video and comment in that one as well we're going to be pulling winners from that one as well as this one so it's been a it's been an incredible year we I my goal last year was to hit 50,000 and we didn't hit 50,000 until January and so I just missed my goal last year. And then this year, my goal was 100,000. And we, we did it. I was so excited <laughs> that we did it. And I'm so glad it happened this week because next week it would have been a disaster because we're uh, with all the Christmas stuff coming up and everything. It would have been really hard to get all these giveaway shows planned and done. So, all right. You didn't do Stick Girl. Oh, I should have done Stick Girl. I was just talking yeah. the whole time. Well, yeah. Where is she? We'll have to pull her. Oh, she's right here, too. Yep. Okay. Well, I'll do her in a minute. Just wasn't even... Just talking. All right. Let's go ahead and draw it out. I might want to put another coat on there because it's looking a little bit uh, splotchy to me. But I'll go ahead and draw out our bridge so that we kind of know where our trees and everything are going to go. I guess I'll use this. So... Here we go. <laughs> I did notice that this, these two, it's a, at a slight angle because I think it's kind of on a hill or whatever, just the perspective of the camera. So this, this, 
and these two points here actually did match up. So that line and this line matched up. All the rest of these are horizontal coming off that. So if we get this at least kind of square, I think we'll, we'll be good to go and we can kind of fudge with all of the rest of this because these just didn't, didn't line up at all because this roof's so saggy here. So I think I'll just start at a slight angle and we'll figure out, I think I want to leave, um, let me see. Here's my third. I want to make the bridge just a little bit bigger. So I want it to fit in this area here. We'll have a little bit of the fence coming off this way and do the big opening here and then the end of it right here. So I'm thinking maybe right here, somewhere in there. I don't know how far down that is. That's a probably about a quarter of the way down. So we'll say a quarter of the way and we'll do a sloped line like this. Coming up and curving back down. Ending really close to the edge on either side of here. Like that. All right, then I want to come, actually, I think I want to come quite a bit over here. So here's our halfway mark. So maybe right at the half and quarter mark, we'll put our edge of our edge of our thing there. So there's, yeah, I think that's good. Good size opening. And here again, this was kind of curved right here. So we're going to want this line up here to be curved at that same angle. Here and here. And then it kind of meets up at an angle here and here. Like that. Come down. And this continues up. And then these outside at corners come out down to this spot. So we're going to want to come out from there and make a little mark. It's actually kind of a angle that comes down that way. Get my what? Let me do that better. So I'm going to come straight out from this corner, but I'm not going to make that line because that's my line's going to actually angle this way. I just want to mark where the corner of my roof line is going to be. And then I want to make an X through here from this corner to this corner and then go straight up from there to get the center peak of my bridge. And it's fairly shallow. It's a fairly shallow peak. There's not a whole lot here. It comes pretty close to this corner here. So it just comes just above it right there. And same thing here. It comes just uh, yeah, there's that corner right here. So we're going to come just out above it just slightly and it's going to come down past it and stop right about where this one would come out. And then we're going to have a, the roof line angled up this way and this way and we'll have the top part of that roof. I will definitely have this traceable available for you if this is just stressing you out. <laughs> Don't uh, don't sweat that. Uh, you know, another thing that you could also do is just take the original photo and blow it up to the size that you want for your canvas and just trace straight on top of the drawing onto your canvas uh, with your tracing paper. And, uh, you know, I, I'm all for making it your life easier when it comes to painting. So I don't, don't feel like that's cheating because... Anything that gives you more success and gives you more confidence is a good thing. You can always work on your drawing later. It's not the same skill set as painting. It's, it's a totally different discipline. So, all right, so I think that that's pretty good. That's a, that's a pretty good start. And then the back of our bridge is just slightly above here. There's a little section of land that's peeking up right here and 
uh, it's coming in pretty close to this line here. So we're going to go straight up from there. These vertical lines are always going to be uh, vertical, you know. <laughs> I knew it. I knew. <laughs> okay, so let's just review this. <laughs> the vertical lines are always going to be vertical. <laughs> you heard it here. That's what you're paying for. <laughs> that kind of behind, you know, in-depth professional Jeez. tips. <laughs> Pointing that out. You're welcome. No problem. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so we'll do about right here, I think. <laughs> this is our opening. There's a little crossbar that comes down here that kind of supports the roof. And then this angles up and connects probably up in here somewhere. So we're going to just create this angle right here. And then technically this angle should match this angle of our roof, but it doesn't. So uh, we're just going to kind of wing it on this angle here and kind of do this sort of curved line that kind of comes generally slopes down and out. And then however wide we want to make uh, the back end of our bridge there, I'm kind of measuring from here. It's not actually going to be exactly that because there's because of the um, vanishing point being out here, that the the back end of this barn was is just, is behind these fence posts, so I really couldn't tell exactly where it was angling up. It would be somewhere way out here, somewhere way that way. Um, so we'll just get it as close as we can right here. Put it straight down there. And then we're going to create our three little, so the rafters are going to come across kind of like this here. And then we're going to have a lot of vertical paneling that comes down here this way and here this way. And then these windows actually kind of curve. So I'm just going to do a line at the bottom and the top of them. This is kind of splits the barn down the middle. So this top line is kind of right at the midline right there and there. And then we'll just cut some windows in here. Leave some room in between. And we could probably measure these and get these exactly perfectly in perspective, but I'm not gonna take the time to do that today. That would be another lesson. Okay. <laughs> we'll just do the best we can. And like I said, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not going to be perfect today because it's... Oh, I think we can make it painterly. Yes, we can. We can and make it a little... And we'll scumble it a little bit. Oh, maybe. I think you, I think you just secretly want to try that. Try it. Oh, how do you know I'm not scumbling right now? <laughs> True, true. Could happen. Alright, so I'm going to leave a little bit more space b right here between these two windows. And then this one's going to be a little smaller. There we go. Like that. And then these three will be kind of the same. So we'll find the halfway mark on this line, right? Because it's halfway mark down here. This one's a little bit taller since we were angled up here so these line these windows won't be lined up with these it'll be actually lined up against this so we'll find that halfway mark there and do our curved line that sort of matches the roof line ish and then the bottom of these windows are going to be covered by the by the fence so we'll just and they're very small. This perspective is getting a lot smaller as we get go farther away. I'm not seeing much of these. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I might bring them down a little bit more. 
And then this fence is going to come along here and cut all of this off and match this curve right here. And come out like that. Alright. What? Oh, just Spencer closing his door very, very quietly there. Oh, yeah. Alright, and then we're going to have snow up here. And you're really not seeing that top part of the bridge because of this uh, angle. This is kind of coming up here and cutting off your view. So there's a snow layer right up there. And then there's going to be another part of this fencing that comes down out this way. All right, you can zoom out a little bit, hon. Need to come down farther right here. Looking at it, it's not. Near, it's not coming down far enough. I'll probably be able to see it better when I start drawing, painting on it. And this would be right in there. Okay, that looks a little bit better, I think. All right, so the trees are going to be coming up here, and I'm not going to actually draw those in. I might draw in my big birch tree that's going to kind of come up and angle over the bridge that comes from behind here. And there'll be snow in front of it. And I think I'll just do the one. Like that. Okay. I think that's good. Good enough. I hope I explained that drawing better. Good enough, I know. <clears throat> I think it was great, actually. Okay, all right. <laughs> You're sweet. I pay you to say that, don't I? Well, only if I want dinner. <laughs> I'm going to make a little bit darker version of the sky color here. For our distant mountains. And we'll put that in kind of behind our bridge here. Just kind of let it be faded back. It's about the height of the top of the windows there or so. And there's just this kind of dark area back here. And then It's actually all kind of gray back in here, like brownish. Go ahead and start with this. We may change that color up a little bit. This is definitely one of those that's going to take several layers for it to look like anything worth keeping. So you're just going to have to kind of keep with the process. I think landscapes in general are kind of like that for me. I'll grab a little bit of white. And we're just going to kind of make it sort of misty so that it it's not a definite defined background back here under behind our trees just going to use kind of that softer sky color and just sort of gray out this whole transition there that'll be a better way than trying to fill in all that detail and give your give this soft kind of misty look so that I get a good and I'm using a six bright so this is just kind of medium medium flat brush and 
there's some dark stuff that's kind of going on back here. It's a little bit more brown, so I'll grab some of that yellow oxide and a little bit more of the burnt umber. Use a, bit, a little bit of that down in here, just kind of. And then I'm going to grab that white and blend over. And a lot of this is just going to be covered by our fence. behind it just in case some of it peeks through. Let's bring that brown up a little bit into our blue. Okay. And let's use this color back in here too. Through our windows. A little bit of white. Really don't have to worry about matching it up to your lines perfectly. Just get it as close as you can. On this has all kinds of stuff all the way up to here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and gray out that whole area right there. If you do your drawing on paper first, then you can always go back in and reapply any of these lines that you lose when you're painting. So we need to bring up some of this color up in here since we got it so high on this right over here. We'll do it on this side as well. And there is actually kind of a mountain pass back here that is showing so I'll just kind of soften it up a little bit with the white but we don't have to cover that up Get a little bit water every now and then just to keep my brush moist just sort of do this transition between this gray kind of brown color and the sky up here. Okay, I think that's good. There's some sort of pine tree back here, so maybe we'll go ahead and put in a little dark some green and brown, maybe a tiny bit of the ultramarine blue, make a nice gray color. All this stuff in the background we just kind of want to keep muted. We don't want it too vibrant because we want it to stay sort of a distant focus, so it's not our focal point. So I'm going to keep it very, very soft, very close in value to this mountain here and just kind of put in a little pine tree shape there. There we go. I think that's good. All right. Yeah, let's put in a little bit of this green just in a couple places else over here and here maybe. Just the suggestion of maybe some, some evergreen shrubs or something still growing. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's use the angle brush here. I'm going to grab my 3 inch angle zen and we'll do some of our background trees. 
And I think I want to use that burnt umber. I'm liking that burnt umber and ultramarine blue mixture. I think that'll be kind of our main sort of main gray that we're going to use in a lot of these trees. This time maybe a little bit more of the brown than the blue. And we'll add some un unbleached titanium over here to give it another value to work with with the same color. I think that's good. Okay, let's try that against our sky. I'm going to add a little bit of water to make it a little bit easier to flow and really press my brush down hard so that I get a nice fine edge. If, you're, if your brush is not coming to a good point, you can use any of your flat brushes that do come to a good point for you. It'll just make it a little bit easier to do these tree trunks just to start with and then we can move to a, a liner brush when we need to but uh, let me see if this is light enough yes this is perfect good color okay so we want it just slightly darker we're not going we're keeping everything kind of muted we really want this to be our focal point so all of these trees that are kind of in this background area are going to be a little bit softer than the dark browns that we'll be using the in the foreground so all of this is going to kind of the bottoms of these trees are going to disappear behind this fence post, so we really don't have to worry too much about what those look like. I'm just going to lay in some tree trunks, mostly just the tree trunks at this point. There's a couple of big ones here that I want to... This one's a little bit thicker, so I'm going to press down a little harder give it a few extra limbs just make sure that you're I've said this before but make sure that you're uh, pulling from the inside of the branch and ending on the tip if that makes sense so I'm always starting my lines towards the towards on the trunk or on a middle of a branch or something like that. And that way, my thinnest part of the line is gonna be up here where, it, where I lift the brush. And these trunks, tree trunks are fairly straight so we can kind of get away with just using this brush for most of it. If you need more curved lines, you can kind of try to curve it a little bit, but you, t you might, um, it might widen your line a little bit if you try to do that too much. So you might just use your liner brush here toward the end once we get these main branches on and add a few of our finer lines later. So don't try to do all of them really at right now. Just I did, whoops, see, see how I did that? I, I did exactly what I told you not to do. There. See how it would be thicker right there where I started it, the line. <laughs> I meant to do that. Okay, let's do another one out here. This one's kind of about this way. Add water every now and then. And I'm going to kind of curve it in just slightly, I think, on this one. That's sort of this outside one, just to kind of pull the painting in visually. So some of these I'm just going to kind of curve the branches in towards the middle. some of this color with a little bit of white and just kind of gray out the bottom of some of these tree trunks so 
they kind of match our foreground a little bit. We can even add a little bit of a highlight to some of them if we want to, some of these bigger branches and trunks. A little bit lighter color. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I don't want to do too much. And this branch is going to come over across and in front of our bridge. So we'll do a big tree right back here that kind of comes up and down to right about here. And some of these branches are going to come over like this. It's got a couple big branches that branch off this way. And it ends, I think, on this far side of the bank. So, do it kind of like that. And one of the other things that you want to pay attention to is where these attach. I'm pressing down just slightly harder if you can notice, especially on this one, you can kind of see where um, where it starts. Um, there's usually a little bit of a thickness where your tree branch starts. So um, when I start it, I might press down a little bit harder and then let up just slightly so that that little section right there is, is a little bit thicker. And then as I go up the tree branch, I'm really lifting until I have just the tip barely touching the canvas. It takes a little bit of practice, but uh, see here, it's getting, it got thinner and then thicker. So I've got to thicken up this whole tr trunk so that it all matches and is thicker toward the bottom. You don't want it to get to be thick, thin, then thick. If that makes sense. So, I'm gonna just do some random. You're still making sense. I am still making sense. Okay. Ever since the vertical lines, you've just been on point. On point? Mm -hmm. It has been like, she's speaking my language. You're, you're, you're <laughs> preaching it. What? You're preaching it. Preaching it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, hon. I'm just going to put in some random, smaller, sort of stick-like trees here. Kind of fill in. Barely pressing down here, just kind of creating some short tree trunks will kind of fill in some of these empty spaces here. All right. Yeah, I think this is looking, looking all right. Now, as they get closer to us here, these ones are going to be on the far side or the closer side, so they'll be a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and put, uh, put in a couple of really thicker tree trunks. I'll do one right here. And these kind of start at different spots. And they're going to be much thicker than these ones that were back here, a little bit wider. And a lot wider than these that are on the far bank. And actually, really, those tree trunks probably end right about here because that's the far side of the river bank or whatever that is that it's covering. So these actually are probably closer to like up in here where they end.
most of the bottoms of these we're not going to see because of the because of the fence, but there is some sections like right in here where we're going to see a little bit of snow drift around these tree trunks. So we may want to put some of that in first before we finish putting the rest of our trees in. Grabbing some white here and just kind of laying in a little bit of snow drift. I've got a lot of brown in my brush still, so it's kind of turning it muddy, but we'll just grab a little bit of blue, make it a little bit brighter color. Still kind of in shadow. Really, the brightest white's going to be right in here where the sunlight's hitting it. These ones are still kind of between these trees. They're going to be a little bit more blue. Grab a little bit of water. There we go. Oops, I almost got off the camera there. Okay, so I'm going to put in a few of these smaller tree branches that are back in here. These are all going to kind of be behind the snow drift. We're on the other side of the bank from these larger trees. This one a little bit darker. Pull some bark texture in it. It's kind of one of our foreground trees. It'll have a little bit more detail than some of the others. I'm going to go ahead and go right up to the edge and off. Grab some white, some of that blue, mix that with it, and I'm going to go in there and add some lines. On top. And let's make some big branches off of it too. Okay, and then we have room now for our big, uh, I've kind of left this middle area here for our big birch tree to kind of come up and around. So I'm going to add a little bit more of this blue here, and this will cut off these trees in kind of a snow drift that are back there. And then we'll put a little bit of it in front of these trees here. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's been a lot of talking this weekend. <laughs> Let me use some of this white here on the tree trunk too. I'm just kind of doing short little vertical brush strokes. 
could also dry brush this later if we want to. We'll see how this looks. I think that looks pretty good. Just giving a little bit of like a tree trunk texture. And we'll probably want to go in and darken up one side so that it has a little bit of a shadow side. Put a little bit of this lighter color on some of these trees back here. A few more random brush strokes, maybe. Little limbs to our trees here. Which uh, brush are you using to put in the happy trees? These are, this is my 3 8 inch angle. 3 8 inch angle. Yes. Check. <clears throat> Oops, wrong way. So we'll do a few kind of coming up off the back of our bridge there too. And maybe a couple that are kind of behind here in there. Okay, I'm going to grab my white now, and I'm pulling it into some of that blue, but it's still pretty bright. And I'm going to highlight this section right back here before it goes down into our bridge. It's going to be bright right there. And then this section in front is going to be a little bit brighter as well. So I'll add a little bit of the bright white, and I'm just going to kind of do it horizontally. So I get a few little highlight spots and we'll be adding more of this later. So this is just our first layer of kind of highlighting. And I still have a little bit of that brown in my brush too that's coming through, but that's okay. This is going to be kind of coming, continuing up here and coming off that way. <clears throat> okay, let me grab a little bit of the blue. Grabbed a little bit of the brown. Mix that in with the white and I'm going to Create a shadow right here, a little bit darker, but it's kind of more on the blue side. There we go. This area inside of our bridge is going to be in shadow. What you laughing at, hon? Somebody sees an eagle head in your paint oh, really? palette there. <laughs> Where? In the white. <clears throat> looks like he's kind of looking up to the right corner on your palette. Oh, it does. <laughs> at the beak. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's great. Peak numbers. Do we want to give do the giveaway now, or do you want to wait and do it at the very end? We'll wait and do it at the end. Okay. Because people are still kind of popping in. Okay. That so sounds good. So you're just taking down names as they. Yeah, comments. I'm taking I'm taking names, and I'm going to be kicking <laughs> pr 
prizes out. Nice. Or prize, really, just one today during the show. All right, I'm added a little bit of white up there just to kind of soften up that, give it a little something extra. Oh, I like it. All right, it's coming together. Let's uh, switch to a smaller round brush here. And thin down my paint even more. Now we use this to create um, some of our finer branches and we really don't have to do a whole lot of these but it, it'll help. You can do as many as you want. There's a ton of little branches on these trees so if you look at that reference image and just kind of try to follow the direction that some of them grow in there all kind of crisscrossed on each other over and And really, they, they're going to cross over themselves, too, so you don't have to have them all kind of, you know, on their own, perfectly spaced, because that's not really that not uh, practical, realistic. That's the word I'm looking for. So I'm going to take some of these and cross them over themselves. And tree trunks like these, especially, they're not always going to grow straight up. They're going to, some of them are going to kind of come over and, and sideways so we can pull some kind of more to the side and back up as well. This liner brush is giving me fits. <coughs> I'll try this one. Oh, oh, it's been put in timeout. Yep. <laughs> Didn't learn from that other brush yesterday, I guess. It didn't learn. No, it's on timeout. Okay, there we go. This is be working better. Plus, it's got longer bristles, so it can make longer lines. The longer the longer you've got here, the longer the line, obviously, but because it's holding more. Um, paint and water. It just is a little bit more difficult to, to control sometimes for a beginner. So use whatever one that you have that you're comfortable using for this. And really it looked fine to me with just the <clears throat> just the three eighths inch angle lines, but I'm just kind of adding a little bit more detail. To some of these. And then there's some of these little branches that are kind of sticking out of the snow right here in front. So I'll go ahead and kind of put some of those in too. They're just little... Do I need to kind of, zoom in on any of this? That's up to them. If they can see it, and I'd say no, but I'm kind of work, I'm kind of moving around quite okay. a bit. Well, we'll say so, no then. Okay. But if, you know, if you've got people asking for that, nope. yes. No, they haven't asked. Okay. They're not even really paying attention. They don't care. They're just waiting for the yeah, prize. Yeah, they're here for the free stuff. <laughs> That's not true. They and didn't even know there was going to be free stuff. Oh, really? I don't think so. Well, maybe maybe I mentioned the 
the painting yesterday when I did it. <laughs> when I did that. I don't remember when I said it. Okay, they claim they're not here for the free stuff. But. <laughs> step out here and and uh, get the potatoes started for for dinner oh is it that time well no but but it takes an hour or so but yeah. by the time yeah can we talk about all that okay can you handle this on your own I think so as long as nobody's asked any questions I don't because I can't see the okay chat. I'll have I'll have them type really loud so you can hear <laughs> so I can hear Good, good plan. I like it. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't miss anybody for the for the random drawing. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. <clears throat> well, you can go back and and check the check the names too when you get back. Did you? Okay. All right, I think that's good enough. I don't, I don't think it needs a whole lot more there. Maybe I don't know. I'm liking it. We might need a little uh, darker values back in here because it feels like those trees are kind of sitting out there. Okay, so here's a I'm question. A little bit of that brown around them. Yeah. Go ahead. It says, how about using a rigger brush for tree work? Yes, that would work. I'm guessing they meant brush. Brush, yes. <laughs> but it's brush. 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 Yeah. Yes, yeah, that would work. Yeah, I say whatever, whatever one, you know, that you're most comfortable using is what I would use, you know, if you've got a, your favorite brush. Uh, that's definitely what I would grab for this. I'm going to add a little bit of white now underneath here. Brighten up that area right where those trees are attached. Let's do a little bit more on here too, on this side. A little bit of white. It's not clean. It's dirty white. There you go, hon. Um, because it's got other stuff in my brush still, so. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some, yeah, I think that's good. I'm gonna maybe just put a few little white ones too. Just little white lines in back in here. Like maybe some of them are covered with crystals or something. Okay, let's get the barn going. So I think, I think I'll do most of it with this number two bright. <clears throat> Will you bring me a drink when you come back, hon? Mm-hmm. Would you like? I think I put my tea in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to use the burnt umber. Mix up a little bit of that ultramarine blue over here. We'll use that solid. I'm not adding any white to it. I'm going to use this in here to darken up this inside of my barn. This part is going to be really dark. There's my roof area. And I have my cross beam right here. Thank you, hon. Butterfly mug. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to use that. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the brown, maybe. And pull down. I'm 
I'm just going to pull it in the direction. I'm you know, going to be adding more color on top, but I'm just going to let the brush do some of this work for me and create some lines in this. I might decide to keep some of them. Let's come right up to that edge and go straight down here. Remember the vertical lines are vertical, so all of this should be fairly vertical right there. This line kind of curves. This line definitely curves. inside of our barn. It'll start looking more like it's something now. Now that we kind of started to get that structure in, I'm going to go ahead and do a nice dark line down here. dark color right under the eaves right here. And all the way there. I'll go ahead and just kind of outline that roof line a little bit. And this is going to be behind the roof. I wanted, I drew it in front, but it's actually going to be behind it. So we'll put that roof in front of it. There. Yeah, that looks good. Just checking my drawing, making sure I got it all kind of looking right. <clears throat> Once this dries, I'm going to use the edge of my brush and do some vertical slats and just do some darker lines straight up and down inside the bridge. going to draw every individual board. We're just kind of doing sort of an impressionist sort of style here. We're not going for uber realism. Just kind of give the indication that there's wood there by just doing these kind of slat lines here. Try to keep them straight up and down. And then there's going to be some cross pieces here and here. And some larger boards right here. Might even grab some black now. And right in between these two, these windows here, there's these dark support beams that come down. So we'll do a nice dark line there and there. And then we'll do some of them across here. There's one back here too. picture it's kind of a faded red I think I'm going to try the quinacridone and cadmium red medium and add some of this unbleached titanium maybe 
to soften it up. We'll use some of that brown in some of our shadow areas for it. We'll start with that color and see how we like it. We may decide we want to darken it or change it up a little bit, but we'll start with our darker color. carefully filling it in here again I'm just kind of going with the direction of the wood boards so it has some texture and I'm gonna do a nice wide one right here all the way down still need to go in the oven but okay do you need my 30 minute warning so you know when to do that <laughs> when I say it's almost done we're almost no, done we're almost done almost done 30 minutes check it's actually not taking too long so far it's only been what an hour 15 so I kind of think it'll be about a two hour is what I'm guessing <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, goodness. So the drawing of the barn is probably the hardest part. <laughs> Just getting that right. Okay, we had another question while okay. I was out. Uh, they want to know, could you use high flow acrylics for the background? Yeah. Yeah, really high flow acrylics can be used for anything. If you've got, um, if you have um, gel medium as well, then you could, you can, you know, change the thickness of them if you need them a little thicker. But uh, yeah, I definitely think that the background could be done with that because it's such a soft, you know, fluid. It wasn't really dry brush, so it was, it was, I don't think you need the, Really, dry brushing is the only technique that I do on you know on a normal basis that requires the heavier body acrylics, or at least kind of is easier with the heavy body acrylics. Kind of some of the blending that I do and things, but the high flow acrylics would work in most cases. They're just you know you can't lay them out on a pallet, that's for sure. <laughs> Gotta have cups because <laughs> they just spread. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> They're definitely high flow for a reason, <laughs> called that for a reason. It's basically like ink. So. But they're actually very versatile and they're great for lining. They would be perfect for the trees. And if you've got a, you know, fluid acrylics or high flow acrylics that are in the tree colors, that would be ideal, honestly. Okay. Good. Okay, I feel like this is even more sloped in my picture. Maybe it's more like this. We'll use this color. I think I'm liking this color. It's pretty good. So we'll just go ahead and start using it on our fence post too. So our fence post is going to be 
real close together, just slat, slat. Don't worry about the bottoms. We'll f cover those up. Just get them, just get the tops right and kind of come down close to each other. Try to get them about the same height, maybe, if you can. Okay, so Trisha doesn't think this is hard enough. Oh, really? She was wondering if you put like some kind of a Christmas swag on the on the bridge. Oh, yeah, like a little. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like greenery. Yeah, That'd thank, be pretty. Thanks, Trish. <laughs> I wonder if your name's in the drawing list or not. <laughs> I'll have to check here. <laughs> Naughty or the nice list. Mark's just excited to have some steaks later on tonight. Got us some steaks. Okay, I think we're going to end right about there. So, and do a little bit taller one for the end post. a line that goes across and it's definitely not straight it's it's kind of janky too do some dark down here we're not going to see the bottom of this one really all the way down but there you go. It's just important to keep these somewhat vertical. Actually, now that I'm looking at the picture, they're more slanted than I realized. <laughs> yeah, you could have slanted them quite a bit down here. They kind of went this way a little bit. I was keeping them too straight. And then they go all the way back into here on this one. thin and close together. I'm not going to put all of them in. I just kind of want to figure out where they're going to be situated. So right in here. they're looking closer together uh, different sized because they're coming at us more than these ones are these ones are closer to us and they're tilted towards us more these ones are kind of laying more flat these aren't looking as thick as these this side okay I think that's pretty good And I'll put the rest of those in once we get our bridge finished. All right, so let's do a dark shadow color. I think I want to use add a little bit of blue for our shadow on our barn, or our, not a barn, our covered bridge. Let me grab a little bit of black too. That'll be good. Okay, black, blue, ultramarine blue, black, and had red medium here just need it it may not even be dark enough at that we'll see I just need it really dark so I can make these vertical slat lines I 
in our barn, in our covered bridge. Yeah, make our windows too big. I'm seeing that, that there's more of the covered bridge showing less, less window here on this side. front side these are going to be wider so we're going to do our oops these were okay there we go we just need them a little bit darker so let's get right up next to our post here where's our post right here we need to darken up this whole area right here so we can see where that post ends or starts and darken up this area underneath our overhang a little bit This area up here is going to be kind of in shadow, so we can add just a little bit darker color up there. Okay, we're getting there. Let's grab a little bit of yellow, a little bit of our burnt sienna, a little bit of unbleached titanium. piece that goes from here over actually kind of sags a little bit doesn't go straight across there's another one that kind of goes right here is this zoomed in enough for folks to see this small detail do we need to zoom in more use this a little bit inside here to highlight some of our slats. Grab a little bit of blue, a little bit of white here. Create a highlight color. And I think I need to switch to a smaller brush here. Let me switch to a round number two up, two zero. It's a very small round. I'm gonna press it, press it flat so that it's kind of about the width that I want these boards to be. And we'll there we go, yeah, it's going to be better. Okay. 
use that for some of these highlights. I'm going to start kind of medium and we'll work our way up to brighter, brighter. But for now, we'll just kind of start slow. Work towards some lighter highlights, colors. Put some... Just kind of blue gray. This almost our our sky color, really. Very similar. Bleached titanium, brighten up that front side of that one right there a little bit, and then we'll highlight just a little bit on those pieces there, there, and there where that light's coming through the window and catching on them. Some more of these highlights down here and then we'll add our some more details so we'll do some highlights on these cross pieces that are coming down or these boards that are coming down here there we go You notice I'm kind of avoiding the dark lines that I did before, so I'm kind of trying to catch the highlights on some of those boards that are already in naturally highlighted a little bit. Grab some of that burnt sienna mixture that I had, the yellow oxide and burnt sienna here, and I'll add a little bit more of that up here. up here somewhere. Alright, I think that's pretty close. Let's grab a little bit of black. Just gonna darken up above those boards. And below them. Where they're getting shadowed. And then a little bit on this side, there's this post here that's coming across. here that goes across that's highlighted quite a bit. So I'm going to grab some of that unbleached titanium, mix that with our brown, maybe put a little bit of yellow in it to brighten it up. here goes all the way across it's pretty well highlighted and then there's a little bit of this front piece of this one that's highlighted 
Where is it getting light from? I guess it's right along here. Put a little bit of this yellow color in here too, just to tie it all in. All right, it's getting there. I feel like this needs to be. There's a little bit of this that I'm seeing underneath here. There's a little bit of that board that you're seeing right there and then this is a little bit wider right there okay and this goes all the way up to there let me add a little bit of brown to that a little bit of burnt umber right there Grab a little bit of the unbleached titanium, just highlight right there. Okay. You're seeing the underside of that, and then there's a highlight that comes all the way down right here, too. Actually, it's a little bit of blue, so let's grab a little bit of white and a little bit of that ultramarine blue. And there's a bright highlight that goes right. Well, it's probably not that bright. It's getting sticky. <clears throat> Rinse that out. That's a little bit too wide there, but that's that's the right color. I think it's probably the right value too. We we'll just need to darken up around it. shadow it a little bit right there okay <clears throat> goodness gracious <clears throat> let's put a little bit of it on the top of this board here I'm noticing right there grab a little bit of white and do a little highlight on the top of our window sills right there and there like there's a little snow definitely a little bit of snow on here. Let me do that before I forget. There's a little bit of snow on here on some of these fence posts. And let's put a little bit of snow underneath to cover up the bottom of that fence. Just tapping in some of that wider snow. Covering up the bottom of those fence posts. And then I just kind of wipe off what to, whatever's left in my brush. Pick up a little bit, paint it on, and then just kind of blend out the extra. Okay, it's looking good. It's getting there. I think this post needs to be thicker. I'm looking at my picture here. So let's. What did we use? Blue and red. My color dried up. Red and quinacridone. Magenta. And some burnt umber, I think. Yeah. Okay. Hope you weren't asking me. <laughs> no. I don't okay. think you were in the room. Maybe you were. Probably, but that doesn't you mean don't I'm pay listening. attention anyway, so it doesn't matter. So, they, I'm just making sure that your levels are good. <laughs> Did it sound right? 
Well, yeah, because as you get going, you know, you start talking. I softer, know I do talk, start talking softer. softer. I do. Sorry. Thank you. That's okay. That's why I have you helping me. And for not over, just for chat, but and for overdubbing. And for overdubbing. Needed. Ornament. Ornament. <laughs> If you missed the candle show, that was quite a show. <laughs> we got we got ourselves so tickled. <laughs> we had too much fun on that show. I swear. That was awesome. All right, adding white and Anita actually grab some of that really dark color. Grab a little bit of black. Really dark. I'm noticing there's a shadow on the fence right here. These fence posts, when they overlap right there, they have a really dark shadow. I'm going to go ahead and put it over here, too, for when those go in. And there's a dark, dark color right there. Mix up a little bit of that ultramarine blue and a little bit of that brown. I'm going to go back over this one more time. I'm trying to straighten it up. brown just kind of neutralizes it a little bit so it's not quite so cherry red gives it a little bit more natural finish looking all right so this end's going to be square to itself right here so that's how you know where that angle is this should make a, a perfect L shape right there looking weird about it. Makes a lot more sense when it has a roof. So I almost put start putting snow on it. I was like, nope, that didn't nope. Missed. Missing something. Have you put the feet on yet? Now we're talking. The feet? Yeah, usually forget to put the feet on the bird, so <laughs> I was just wondering. No, but I almost forgot to put the roof on the bridge, so it's pretty similar. Okay, there we go. Let's use some of this brighter red here. We'll add a little bit of 
unbleached titanium. And that unbleached titanium's got enough yellow in it that'll just keep it from turning super pink. Although this is a fairly pink color, the fade on it. It's pretty, pretty light. Let's put in a little bit of highlights on that. And let's use this same color on our front of our barn there. And there. Now we can always go back in and darken this back up if we get it too light, so not worried too much about it right now. I'm just going to lay in a little bit of this color to highlight our bridge. in there. Got a little bit more of that kind of medium brown, medium red, brighter red. And I'm going to go over and just kind of set back some of those highlights. Actually, these go all the way down right here. They get they. It's not a separate piece. It's just cut at an angle. These boards are cut at an angle. Right there. So I'm gonna fix this right here and make that board end right there, and then cut this one in half right there. And same thing here. Make sure these two. dark red, red, dark, dark red. Make a nice dark shadow right under there. Zoom back in if you want. I just wanted to see it on screen. There we go. Paints are drying up. 
so fast. Definitely need to get a humidifier in here. <clears throat> Barely have time to change brushes and they are dried out. There we go. Get some of those brighter highlights in there. This side is going to be on the whole a little bit darker than this front side, so. You can use deeper colors on it. Getting this kind of medium red color here again. And really, at any point when you feel like yours is good, you can stop. At this point, I'm just kind of trying to get it a little bit closer to how I want mine to look, but you may have already done it right the first time, so. Just depends on kind of where yours is at. I'm gonna get some darker lines in here. Okay, and then we needed to use that dark, dark color and go underneath these window sills here. Just a little bit of dark shadow right there and then on this inside right here. We're seeing just a little bit of that inside of that window. Okay. And then this side is going to be brighter. We can put some of our brighter color right up there and right here. <clears throat> okay, it's getting close. Let's add a little highlights. I'm just going to do little lines here to create some textured looking lines in our front of our barn. Our bridge. Sorry, I keep calling it that. I think it's the color. <clears throat> Making me think of a barn. Alright, let's grab some of that dark. I need to put a split in the roof line right there. And another split right here. Make sure that this has got a shadow all the way down. And clean up that line if you need to. <clears throat> totally lose my voice. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to talk for our, <laughs> in our chat tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> you want me to go get you like a bottle of tequila or something? <laughs> Is that what it needs? I don't know. And whiskey for my throat? <laughs> so we don't drink whiskey, so. Mm -mm. I just spilled my tea all over myself. Wow, you really do have a drinking problem. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's all down. I, the, the, the lid opened funny. It wouldn't come out, and then it all came out at once. Okay. <sighs> they can't see it, so it doesn't matter. It didn't happen, right? It's not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Give him some white here. <laughs> and let's put it in our fence posts on this side. Grab some of that. Oops. We just want it to be enough different to be able to be seen against this fence here. So we want them to be about the same height. Oh, we want to put in our fence post again over here where we, against where we put that black there and there. So there. Can't see them at all. Let's get some more lighter color here. There we go. Oh, you could have left that open and. You could have said that's where the tank busted through. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Just put some scattered pieces of wood on the ground. Some just tracks. Like it just... I'm going to put some dark down here. And then we'll cover those with brighter red. Okay. 
this is the same colors as I used on the barn. I'm just using them down here now. This is that highlight color. Really, these go up higher. I don't know why I'm doing them so small because these go all the way up here and they go all the way across like this in front of this windows here. Yep, I gotta look at my reference here. Only when they get to about right here do they kind of start falling off. Grab a little bit more white. And this fence is definitely rickety, so we can have them leaning a little bit. They don't have to be perfectly spaced. They're not super tidy pickets. Mm, press it down too hard there. you can go back through with some of that darker color and just kind of separate those out a little bit better. All right. They're definitely lighter on that this side than they were on that side. So I need to add a little bit of that highlight color over here, even though they are dark, they're lighter in the picture too. But I'll add a little bit of this highlight color on a few of these. Really, probably easier to do this with my flat brush. Let me go back to using that. Holds more paint. I don't have to worry about it becoming too wide on me. There we go. Let me get those tops defined a little bit better. There we go. And then back in here, they kind of smaller and turn a little bit. It actually looks like it goes back into the woods and kind of curves back this way, but I'm not going to try to get all of that in there. I'm just going to do a few here and call it good. Thirty-minute warning here, hun. If you want to start the potatoes, okay. and then we can come back and draw a winner. Ooh. Would there be a traceable for the winner? Because <laughs> I can't draw very well. Yes, there will be a traceable for every everybody. Not just the winner. I won't tell you we're painting off camera there for a little bit. Oh, really? 
That's why I zoomed out. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully not too long. All right, so now I gotta fix this bottom here because it's it's going down too too much compared to the top of the fence. So I need to grab a little bit of white and I'm gonna just go in here and tap. If I can get it in between some of those slats, all the better. There we go. And then this kind of comes down here. There we go. snow maybe it's reflecting that color find enough for me back in here you're back that was quick I guess you did all the prep work before you just had to stick them in the oven huh mm -hmm. good deal so I'm going to go in with a wash of this dark red here now over the barn or the red of the at the top here and it will kind of just set that color back in and you'll still see, be able to see the highlight colors but it won't be quite as bright there we go right up right up there and then we can do that with the color too. So if you want to change the tone, you like the values you've got, you can, um, you know, want to make it a brighter red or something like that. You can wash over the top with uh, a little bit of wet down, watered down, or you could use your glazing liquid if you have it. And I'll do that on our fence here because I feel like it's kind of pink. So just glazing over it with that red to brighten that up a little bit. Do a little bit on this side too. All right, I think that's pretty good. I think I'm happy with that and we'll Put in our birch tree. <clears throat> Definitely need a little bit darker uh, shadow on the inside of our barn here. I'm noticing this value is not quite dark enough, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Kind of wash in some real dark color right there. And let's use some of this color here, and we'll put a little bit of it kind of under some of our snow over here. Maybe not quite that brown, bright, dark, but we'll. We'll go back through and add more white on top we'll just put in set in a little bit of darkness first and then we'll 
brighten it up. There we go. Definitely feels very snowy. Like, like how it's feeling. Let's grab some white and we'll put it up here on our roof. Then we're going to have to cover up our tree branches there. So make sure you go all the way down to that roof so that it doesn't look like the tree branch is going through the roof. And then this side is piled up a little bit higher even. And then we'll want to put a shadow, drop shadow, underneath this snow, too. So where it's kind of covering over our bridge there, we need a shadow. Oh, I didn't bring this corner up high enough, I don't think. We'll bring it up like this. There we go. It's getting there. All right, so let's set back in some of our shadows that we put there. Just gonna put some white on top. And lay some horizontal snowdrifts in there in our road. If you wanted to get real fancy, you could put tire tracks or something like that, even. Okay, I'm going to make sure I've got all that. Okay, so you threw, out. you threw the suggestion out there. Mm -hmm. How would you do a tire track? Um, I would, well, we can just do it. We'll just do, uh, this one looks like it's got a, like a snow track or something, but I don't know. We'll, we'll kind of try to do, white highlights through there. Maybe widen it out so that it gets wider as it gets closer to us. Probably better get a little bit wider here. Narrow as it gets closer to the bridge. Something like that. And then we could go in with just a little bit more of that blue shadow color and shadow the one side of it. So it looks like it's got a little drop shadow on it. There we go. Uh, let's also... Use this color while we've got it on our snow up here underneath, right at the roof line. A little bit of blue shadow. And then there is a dark shadow on the red as well. Right here. 
just kind of tap and be careful not to go over your snow with this. We could have put this in first and then put our snow over the top if we'd been smart. I don't know if I've been accused of that. I don't know. Not today, that's for sure. Well, it's been a fun weekend. We've been, it's been exciting. Just a lot going on, so I feel a little scattered. You know, like more than normal when I'm teaching. <laughs> you know, just like my brain is going in all different directions right now. Uh, it's hard to focus. Okay, that's looking good, I think. I like it. And let's put in our tree, and I think we'll be pretty much done. And really, you could stop here if you wanted to, and just just fine. I want I want a birch tree in mine though, so we'll do that real quick, and then we'll we're right at two hours, aren't we? Okay. So I want him to go right in here. He's gonna angle off this way. Right in front of everybody. And I'm wiggling as I paint him in. I don't know if I want to go over the top of my bridge after all. If you want to, you can angle it. Well, I don't know. I guess I can... We'll angle it down. Oh, scary. Okay, there we go. We'll bring him down a little bit farther, so make sure he's in the foreground here. making sure that I don't have any areas of this tree that are too thick for in the wrong spot there. There we go. Definitely does set back that bridge a little bit by putting the tree in front of it. Use a little bit of the ultramarine blue and brown. Yeah, I didn't use my green. Well, I did use the green a little bit on that pine tree, I think. Uh, let's see. Where's our light coming from? It's coming from this direction, so we're going to shadow this side of him a little bit.
just kind of tapping in, pulling a little shadow on that one side of him. And I put him in with that bright white, so I really don't know that I'm going to have to highlight him at all. a little bit of white with the that brown you know just kind of adding a little bit of that in the bark too Shadows coming from underneath here as it comes down. Grab that brown, a little bit of black. Mix that with what's on my brush and we'll add some of the... I don't want it so dark that it's drawing attention too far away from our bridge, so kind of want it in that same darkness as the darkest parts of our bridge there. Do you want to zoom in on this? I was hoping you'd ask that. I really did want to zoom in on it. You really did? Yeah. <laughs> the look I just got. Sarcasm. <laughs> I wish I had a picture of that look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you being serious right now? I got that look of like, don't mess with me. Don't, don't do it. Not, it's not the day for that. <laughs> I know you're messing with me earlier during the live show. Everybody's gonna think I'm so mean to you because I was like, "Stop interrupting me." What, what, what did you tell me not to do? I can't remember. Oh, before we yeah, started. Yeah, before we started. Don't be weird. <laughs> Don't be weird. <laughs> Just gonna do the finger guns. I, I just I told you not to be weird. Don't be weird, please. <laughs> it took all my energy. I know. Yeah, I did. I, I stifled your creativity, didn't I? I'm sorry, honey. Your creative expression. I'm always telling people to be creative. You know, be creative and all. Okay, so many go off camera. Okay, immediately. Did I? Well, no, not immediately. But just a little bit up there. Just right there. You tried. I tried. You caught me. Thanks, son. All right, let's put a little bit there so we can see it against the bridge. Just adding little random dabs and dashes, kind of trying to trying to follow the angle of the tree so as it turns I'm turning so I'm always pulling kind of uh, across the branch you know so pulling this way so even if it's up here I'm always kind of pulling it a square to the edge of that branch I 
Scooter's snoring over there. I can hear him. We lost the dog again. He would not make a good co-host. I don't know about Oliver. Oliver might hang in there with us, our cat. He's on the naughty list for me right now because he attacked Scooter the other day just for jumping up on the couch next to him. So he got spent outside for a while. And then he went into the garage after that. Mom was mad. <laughs> He's getting grumpy in his old age. He's just like, he does it to the cat, the other cat, and he does it to us. If we if we're loud, the other day I was talking to Mark about something, and he just he started growling and like, well he bit Mark, trying to tell, tell because Mark was holding him back. He's wanting to attack me to tell me to be quiet. I'm like, cat, this is my house. <laughs> <laughs> Being a grumpy old man. He's like, I'm trying to sleep. Be quiet. All right. Mark puts up with him a lot more than I do. Okay, we can zoom out now, I think. We'll grab some of that bright, bright white. And we'll go on top with it and tap in some bright white, maybe even like it's snow on top of there. I'm going to need to add a few more branches to this as well, but... a little snow in between there. Just tap in a little bit. And then we'll tap in some snow along the base. Kind of set it down into the ground. And I'm going to take some of that brown and mix it with the white. And put in some more of our sticks that were down in here because I covered up some of them. And we'll put some in front of our fence too. like grasses or dead grasses or something, I don't know. Adjust the where some of these start and stop so they're not all lined up. I was kind of lining them all up on the same level. There we go. snow, kind of in front of some of them, to lay them down into the foreground so they don't look like they're floating in space. but it's too bright. Pulls it forward too much. There we go. Okay. 
Let's add a couple more of our branches and they kind of get darker as they go out on the on that birch tree. So I'm going to add a little bit of the brown to my white so they're not completely white. Add a lot of water. Let's see if that shows up. Yeah, that's showing up. Okay. Are you laughing? Uh, yeah, well, people in chat are trying to do a crowdsourcing to send us gift certificates for restaurants so we can eat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like it. <laughs> so Mark doesn't have to cook is what they're saying. They want to be able to I don't have to leave to start dinner. against the dark oh. push those branches back there push those trees back a little bit visually So this is our last Patreon one of the year. We're done with the Patreon bonus videos. And I think that our plan is that next year we'll do uh, we'll do a giveaway of a painting for every bonus video that we do. So that'll be a new feature that we'll add to the to the um, Thing and we'll, it, it doesn't want to ha won't have to be live. The only reason we did it for the live show this time and last and yesterday or earlier today with the poinsettia was just because they're Christmas themed and we want to get them in the mail before so you can actually enjoy them at Christmas time. So that's the only reason why we're doing it so urgently. But um, next year we'll probably just do the giveaway in the comments and then pull it pull the winners and announce them on Patreon later on the next week or something. So that's the plan. we got to get rid of some of these paintings in here. <laughs> Hopefully that'll help us declutter the studio some and also be incentive, you know, for folks who want to support us on Patreon. We are just about done. A few more little branches here. Do you want to make sure that your branches are <laughs> not showing through underneath this white? So make sure that your <clears throat> your lines are dark enough that they're not going to be your under under colors are not ghosting through them. So I would give it a second coat if it's happening. You don't want the background trees to look like they're keep showing through the foreground trees. That would not be good. All right, I'm going to grab a little bit of brown and just kind of under shadow just a few of these branches. I could spend hours on a, on a, well I did spend hours, I should say, more hours on a painting like this and adding more and more details, but you know, honestly, uh, at some point you gotta stop, so 
you know, just whatever point that you're happy with it, um, you know, the level of realism that you want with it. Uh, this is much more, and it's, it's getting toward, you know, getting towards a more realistic painting, I think, than I had originally intended, but I, I like it, so I think it's, it's worked out. Hopefully you liked it too, and if you try it, you can share it with me on either our Taking Flight group if you're in there or elsewhere on Facebook, my Thankful Art group, or even on Patreon, although I'm not as good about seeing the posts on Patreon for some reason. They sometimes, I, I miss them, but you can post your artwork on my Patreon um, homepage as well, so, and I do see them eventually. There, adding a little bit more white. All right, zoom out there, hun, and let's see. Make sure I caught everything. <coughs> all of our shadows and all that good stuff. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. And uh, might go in one last layer of that white. Just a really bright white in our foreground and just pump up some of the snow drifts here. Just kind of light. You can maybe kind of angle it so it looks like it's kind of coming downhill a little bit maybe. There we go. Yeah, I like that. So it looks like it's maybe higher there a little bit angling down toward our road where the light's hitting it. Put a little bit more of the white on this side of our tracks. That's good. I'm going to call it done. Okay. Then we just need to stick curl. Oh, yeah. That's and a right. winner. That's right. We do. Okay. I just noticed the roof needed a little bit more white. Okay. There we go. All right. Stick girl. She needs... What does she need? I'm going to give her... I'm not going to try to... Well, I guess I could try to do it. We're quick bridge. Just to... We'll do a little bridge in the background here. Going that way. <laughs> These are always so bad. It's, it's so comical. It's going right up to the water line too, which makes absolutely no sense. It's a flood. I know, I know. Oh gosh, this one's pretty hopeless. Okay, well. <laughs> I think I ruined her. I think I ruined her. It's all right. She looks like some sort of a we'll superhero goddess. She does. We'll put some snow on top. Lightning and... Okay, you can tell I'm phoning this one in. <laughs> Not that I always like put so much detail into these, though, anyways, right? <laughs> there was so well thought out and painted in. All right. Uh, we could have put the fence in, I guess. That probably would have been easier. Put in that red fence for him. Give it a little window over here. All right, we're good. I'm calling that. <laughs> Done. And the covered bridge to, or the road to nowhere, road to the water. 
right. So what are we saying? What are, oh, we're giving away. We, we got a winner. A winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Did you do a... Somebody said that in chat. Did you? <laughs> no, somebody did. <laughs> actually, I don't want to use and that. And actually, really they're all winners in our heart. That's <laughs> Because they have generously given of their hard-earned money. Absolutely. And we really do appreciate it. Yes, we do. Because we, we totally understand how how hard it is sometimes you know, when you're making decisions on, on what to support and what to do. So we do mm-hmm. appreciate your abundant generosity. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. It's, it still is... Amazing to me that anybody cares enough about what we're doing to send us money. <laughs> we resisted doing Patreon for a long time because of that. I think I want to do blue here. I want to do like a snow color. I don't want it to do too dark. Get it as close to that background color as I can. Maybe put it on this side. Brush doesn't want to. Well, bend now we just me. we just had a new chatter come in. Oh yeah. Their name wasn't in the list to be uh-uh. drawn from. So now what do I do? Did you already draw a winner? Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay. Well, who is it? Who's the winner? Yeah. The winner is. Sandy Shario. Nice. Congratulations, Shane. You have Sandy. 16 seconds to get here and claim your prize. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy won the snow globe. <laughs> so, Sandy, send me your address. Uh, you can send it to me on uh, Facebook Messenger or to my email, AngelaFineArt at gmail.com. And I will send this out oh, to you. Oh, we're not making her week. come here and pick it up. No, no. We'll, send, we'll mail it to her. We'll be nice. I hope she's not like in Australia or someplace like that. Where is she? Uh, I don't know. Because it's pretty expensive. That's why I made it small, though. Because I think we can fit into the one of the flat rate boxes. So I'm not seeing her pop up in the chat. Okay. She already ditched us. Yeah. <laughs> but I do, I do have <laughs> records of the second and third and fourth place. Okay. Winners, Just so in case. we'll go down the list if we don't get a hold of this. Oh, I, she's she's pretty active. I think I've she seen, is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. So. I think we'll get get a hold of her. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I like how it turned out. I think yeah, for not having uh, practiced it. <laughs> it's always an adventure. I need to <laughs> find more time in my week to. I keep talking. I can't get the mouse to work. Oh, you can't get the mouse to work. Okay. okay I'm good. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. We will see you next week. Tuesday, we're going to do a uh, a pair of ice skates, I think. It should be cute. So I'll be posting that link pretty soon. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll have the, the uh, traceable posted up later on today. Bye. <laughs>